Okay, Josh, the uh, IT guru, says that we are now live, Facebook fans. It is 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoon, so as always, this is question and answer time. Hopefully you guys are going to join us and listen to these fantastic, exciting, and riveting pest control questions that I know all of you are on the edge of your seats, probably losing sleep at night, wondering what the answer to these questions might be. Well, um, and I'm not sure Netflix or Hulu, it's going to be one of those real soon, I have a feeling. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're, we're, we're talking to the, um, to the executives now about a syndicated broadcast. Um, it's, so, it's just money right now. It's just, yeah, we, we just got to yeah, get the money right. Look, so. are we talking seven figures or eight? Um, uh, negotiations are happening. So, um, anyway, for all two of you that are listening right now. It is actually two people on right now. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was being funny, but um, all two of you, thank you for joining us. Um, whoever you might be, uh, feel free to ask a question. I do need to give... A uh, couple of shout-outs, uh, one to our very good, very close friends, uh, Hudson and Carolina, who just had a baby, so congratulations to them. Um, Mom and baby are doing very well, so we're very excited, very happy for Hudson and Carolina. Congratulations to them. I also need to give a shout-out to our office manager, Tara, and her boyfriend, Stephen, who are in Peru right now so that's pretty cool they uh, sent pictures uh, from the top of Machu Picchu uh, in Peru uh, was that yesterday or yeah, day before? Two, two days, days ago, ago. Yeah. sorry two days ago that was Monday um, absolutely beautiful so definitely I've got to add that to my bucket list I'd love to make it down there sometime um, but it looks like they're having a great time in Peru so hopefully not too much junk hits the fan this week while Tara is gone because she is the glue that holds us together. Um, and coincidentally, Lucas, our service manager, what were you thinking? is off the next couple days. I, I know, it's, it's bad timing, guys. But look, we can survive anything for like two days. All right, That's all we got to do. Two more days and we're, we're back in business. We'll have, we'll have the band back together. Um, but yeah, shout out to all those guys. It is Lucas's birthday is it today? I think today? it's Friday, actually. Friday. Yes, it is Friday. It is yep. the 2nd. August 2nd is Lucas's so birthday. Everybody wish happy birthday to happy Lucas. Happy birthday to Lucas. And honestly, from the bottom of my heart, he is a fantastic guy, fantastic service manager. Uh, coincidentally, he um, also uh, just has his five-year anniversary with us, so he got some really nice gifts. Um, I think Josh might have posted some video online. Um, of him getting some really cool stuff for his bike. He did, uh, gosh, I don't know how many miles. 81 miles. What, no, 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 not, not for the Miracle Hill, oh. but um, up to, from his house to Are you talking about the last bottom weekend? of Caesar's head. Yeah. That normally takes him about an hour, he said, and it shaved a good 10 minutes off his ride with his new wheels and <laughs> gadgets, accessories that he got. So um, that's really awesome. We, we could not be happier for Lucas. So he got some really nice stuff there. And um, some extra benefits that everybody gets when uh, they hit five years here. So. We have a comment. Oh, okay. So Jessica Floyd Miller, and, okay. uh, she posted, Why in the world are there so many disgusting snakes? <laughs> Don't care if it is a black snake or not. I'm terrified of them all. Smiley face down. Okay. Okay. Gosh, I could go biblical on this answer. <laughs> you know, why are there so many disgusting snakes? And we could go back to the Garden of Eden and Eve and all of that. Um, not going to go there, um, but uh, I, I, I will say that um, I do disagree. Not all snakes are nasty and disgusting. You do have to be careful when you are handling a snake um, because they can carry some different bacteria um, and, and germs that aren't so good for you. So always wash your hands. I would recommend that. You know, even if you're handling, you know, your kids picking up bugs out in the yard and things like that, you know, we want to wash our hands and those kinds of things. Um, but overall, they're, they're not that uh, threatening. I will argue that snakes do a, a, an awful lot of good for us. Um, so everybody says, oh yeah, they eat the mice and the rats, um, which they do. Um, but you have some snakes like the king snake, for instance, that actually eats other snakes. That's why he gets his name as the king. He's the king of snakes because he eats other snakes. Um, so you might want to keep the king snakes around if you really hate snakes. Um, also, Jessica, snakes eat uh, tons of insects, 
um, which I don't think that they get credit for, but like your black snakes and whatnot will eat tons of insects as well as you know mice and things like that. So they'll they'll keep the other little vermin uh, away from your house. Um, all in all, you know, snakes just like any other animal. He, he's not going to bother you. He's not going to mess with you. I do get it. They kind of give people the willies. I don't know why that is. You know, psychologically that we just don't like snakes, and I think that's very very common in our society. Um, typically, I am not going to uh, euthanize a snake, which means kill it, um, <laughs> unless it is a poisonous snake that I feel is uh, a direct threat to you know my family um, or you know people around me. So um, if I saw a poisonous snake out in the middle of the woods somewhere, that's his territory. I'm going to probably leave it alone. Copperhead, rattlesnake, doesn't matter. Um, a copperhead under my front porch is probably going to die. Um, so, you know, that would be the difference there, you know, because I do want to protect my, my, my home family. I will also say, um, <clears throat> the, 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 the poisonous snakes we have in South Carolina, we basically have three pit vipers, all right? Um, and I won't go into that too, too much, but, um, you know, they get that term pit viper. They have pits up on their snout, which, um, they believe are, are helpful in like sensing heat. Uh, maybe like heat sensors, um, but uh, uh, you have the copperhead, you have the rattlesnake, and you have the cottonmouth or the water moccasin. Um, tons of people in the upstate say, oh, I saw a water moccasin in my creek last weekend and whatnot. In the upstate, we really just don't have water moccasins. There are other types of water snakes though. I'll be the first to say I was swimming in Lake Joe Cassie and had a snake swim up to me in Lake Joe Cassie. Um, I, I probably left some fish bait in the water. It scared me so bad. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. You can use your imagination. Um, it was not pretty, but it was just a water snake. It was not a water. Was that too much, Josh? Um, <laughs> Josh is laughing at me. I don't know why. Um, it was not a water moccasin. Uh, when I was probably about 20 years old, I was living in a cabin, um, again, up in northern Greenville County, and there was a beautiful lake that the cabin sat on, and I saw a couple of snakes swimming in the water, and I ran in, I got my shotgun, and I shot the snakes, um, and I was so proud because I thought I'd killed a couple of water moccasins. Eh, in hindsight, I was an idiot. They were not water moccasins. We do not have water moccasins in the upstate. Um, so I would challenge you, you know, for those of you who swear up and down, I saw a water moccasin, you know, capture it. Let's check it out. A um, couple of things you can look for. Of course, you can look for the pits up on his um, head. Um, kind of, you know, some people might even mistake them for nostrils. They're not really up in the front like a nostril would be. But, um, you can look for the pits. Um, the easiest thing for me to say yes it is or no it isn't uh, a, a poisonous snake or, um, or a pit viper at least would be the elliptical eye, so um, like a cat's eye, so the pupil kind of goes up and down rather than a very round pupil. So we have round pupils. Um, most, um, most snakes have round pupils in our area. So if you get a black snake or a garter snake or things like that, it's going to have a round pupil. So for me, I can see the pupil. I know that it's, um, I know that it's a non-poisonous, or I know that it, I'm sorry, if it's a round pupil, it's a non-poisonous snake. If it's an elliptical eye, um, so like I say, kind of like a cat's eye, that the, the pupil kind of goes up and down, then that is a pit viper, it is a poisonous snake. Um, we did actually get a call recently from a copperhead um, that was found and killed at one of the area schools. I went out there. And in my mind, I'm thinking the same thing. Everybody that sees a brown snake says it's a copperhead. Ah, oh, we killed a copperhead. We killed a copperhead. No, you didn't. It's probably a corn snake or something like that. Corn snakes have a similar color pattern. I got out there. Sure enough, it was a copperhead. It had the elliptical eye. It had the hourglass pattern that a copperhead has, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One of the last things that you can look at, too, with a snake, um, and this is actually with just a snake skin. So we find snake skins shed in uh, people's crawl spaces all the time. All right, um, I hope I don't get this mixed up. I always have to remind myself. But um, if it is a non-poisonous snake on the belly, you have two sets of scales. If we have a second, I can grab one of the snake skins and actually show it. Can I, can I go grab one? Sure. Okay, 
hang tight with me for like, give me 10 seconds. Well, maybe 20. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, folks. Pretty Face will be right back. And you do have another question already. Okay, all right, here we go, guys. Check this out. This is, this is a beautiful snakeskin that... Uh, you have to get pretty close. I believe... Uh, you have to get pretty, I know, I will, I will, I will. Chris Gilbert got for us. So I don't know how I'm doing in the frame here, but this is a nice um, six foot long plus snake. Probably a black snake. You can't really tell the species per se from the skin. However, what you can tell, and this is a live snake or a dead snake, if you look at the belly, Josh, you'll have to help make sure that You're I'm doing in the good. camera. Yep. You see a single set of scales going across the belly. All right. Um, until you get to this anal opening, sorry, that's his, that's his hiney hole, um, right here. And then it goes to two sets of scales. You see how those scales overlap? Can you see that yep. in the camera okay? See. Okay. This is a non-poisonous snake. We know that. Um, in South Carolina. All right. I can't speak for all the snakes around the world. I'm not a herpetologist. Um, but I can speak for the ones that we have in South Carolina. If it is a pit viper, if it is a poisonous snake, this single scale, when it gets to the anal opening, continues as a single row of scales. If it is non-poisonous, it is two sets of scales. For all of you that have crawl spaces and you find the snake skin or you find snake skin out in the woods somewhere, things like that, look at its belly and you can actually tell whether it is a poisonous or a non-poisonous snake. So, fun fact, use it at parties and social gatherings. Um, you'll be super popular just like me. And, and if you can't identify snakes as poisonous or non-poisonous, maybe they shouldn't just wander up and go check to see. Well, that's probably a good... You don't want to flip the snake over and ask, yeah. you know. Well, so <laughs> folks, Josh is right. I... I I assume there is some common sense um, going on in people's minds. So yes, um, if you are not a trained professional, please do not try this at home. Um, really and truly, if, if you have a live snake and you're not sure if it's poisonous or non-poisonous, things like that, it is best just to leave it alone. Um, poisonous snakes do not always inject venom. They can give dry bites um, because that venom is actually, uh, I'm going to say, very expensive for them to produce biologically. It's like, not like they have an unlimited supply. Uh, they need that venom to survive, to get food, um, to defend themselves, etc., etc. So a lot of times you'll have a poisonous snake even that will bite, but it's a dry bite. And yeah, it hurts. Um, definitely don't recommend it, but you're not going to die, uh, most likely. So um, I will move on from that. Why do we have so many snakes? It's the time of year. Uh, it's the warmth, things like that. It's just the area we live in. We have tons of snakes. Most of those snakes are good snakes. Um, I do recommend leave them alone. Let them wander back in the woods or wherever they came from. Um, they do a lot of good, uh, more than you would imagine uh, for our environment, your home, and uh, things like that. So um, you said there was... Would, would part of that be the abundance of critters that are available for them to eat? The food source oh, sure. is just so Yeah, abundant. there's a reason we don't see a bunch of snakes in the Antarctic. All right? There's... <laughs> there's there's nothing for them to eat yeah. there or survive off of, you know, um, a, apart from the cold. Um, you know, so yes, we live in an area that is just rich with uh, insects and rodents. Um, they do very, very well here. Um, so in, when, you, when you go to an area, um, you know, think of the food chain, all right? So uh, in a desert climate, for instance, um, there's still animals out there, um, probably more animals than what people realize. Um, but when the vegetation is scarce, you're going to have uh, fewer um, insects in the desert area, which means you have fewer vertebrates that are also feeding on the insects, um, and then uh, fewer uh, predatory animals um, that are feeding on those smaller you know, rodents and things like that. Um, so, so we have an abundance of food uh, for animals to live and thrive. And it's an ideal climate for a, a diverse range of species. Um, and so, yes, we're going to have plenty of snakes that are also in our area as well. Chrissy Magner Huddleston okay. says, what can be done to get rid of chipmunks? Okay, 
That is a good question. Um, so that is such a good question that um, I'm going to start by saying our company actually doesn't typically handle chipmunks because they can be such a pain in the neck. All right, um, it, it just takes a lot of repeat visits and, and things like that. But I am going to tell you some things that you can do as a homeowner um, that can work. Um, I honestly don't know of any non-lethal methods that that work well, uh, unfortunately. So I wish, you know, we could uh, trap these little chipmunks, you know, Chip and Dale, and you know, let them out in the woods uh, somewhere, and they live happily ever after. Um, and I'm sure that there are some people who have tried that, and, and maybe there's some people out there who have even had success with that. So I'm not saying that that's impossible. What I'm saying is, in my experience, I have not had success um, trapping and releasing chipmunks into the wild. That being said, um, what has been successful are uh, the rat size snap traps. Um, and I know, you know, whatever, everybody's going to have a, a different tolerance, let's say, for uh, the, the squeam, squeamish factor here, um, but you, you are going to um, trap and kill uh, chipmunks with these snap traps. Um, place several of them around the, the opening, so they're typically going to have uh, you know an opening in the ground that's probably the size of maybe a silver dollar, uh, something like that, give or take, maybe a half dollar, um, so they're not very big. Um, you're going to put several of these traps around it. Uh, you can bait it with the typical peanut butter, uh, peanut butter crackers, popcorn is a great bait. Um, you know, you can try all kinds of different things. Um, I, I tend to, I tend to like you know, peanut butter and, and popcorn and maybe some crackers and things like that. Um, you don't have to bait them at all if you're putting enough of them around the, the, the entrances to their their burrows um, because they will just out of curiosity. They're naturally curious. You know, they're going to stick you know, their head or foot or whatever in these things and it's going to, it's going to whack them. Um, it's going to get them pretty good. The thing is you can have multiple chipmunks. Um, you get rid of the current ones. Um, so, you know, if you trap one or two and you get rid of them, you say, aha, I've gotten rid of the problem. Chances are there's more than just one or two. Um, and then also when you get rid of however many, you know, let's say you trap 10 of them and you don't get any more activity for a while. So continue resetting those traps until you're not getting any more activity. Um, and you can move them around a little bit or whatever, but you know you want to keep them in the same general area, fairly close to the burrow openings. Um, don't be surprised if you take the traps away, um, and the next spring or the next summer or whatever happens, you start to get more chipmunks um, because they, you know, nature abhors a vacuum. So when the old chipmunk family gets knocked off, um, the new chipmunk family is going to move in from next door or wherever uh, they're living. So. So that will happen. It happen. It can be an ongoing problem. Just be prepared for that. Um, it's not. It's not a one and done easy fix. But the the the, the large uh, rat size snap traps is what we have had the most success with on that. And so um, that may or may not be attractive to, to most people. But I hope that helps, Chrissy. So. I know we've gone over our, our time actually a yeah. little bit, but. Our very own Tara Mayhew hey. uh, is on with us live and has asked, can you explain why the mosquitoes in Cusco look like bees? The mosquitoes in Cusco look like bees. I have no idea. Maybe they are bees, Tara. Maybe you're just misidentifying. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I have no idea with the mosquito population in Cusco, Peru. Um, you know, maybe they are the size of hummingbirds and... Uh, they might abscond your boyfriend uh, if you're not careful, but um, I, I have no idea. So Tara, try to snap a picture of one of these bee-sized mosquitoes for us while you're on vacation, and I hope you and Stephen are having a, an amazing time, and, and Christina as well, so tell Christina we said hello. Um, Beyond that, yeah, once I see some pictures of them, then, then we'll go Said the there. guide clearly said they were mosquitoes. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, good, good. I, I believe you, and I believe him. Um, I would love to see a picture of one, and then, you know, we can do our own research and, you know, see if uh, Clemson has, you know, some sort of information on uh, Peruvian mosquito populations. I, I really don't know. I haven't, I haven't been to Peru yet, but... 
maybe we can uh, take another trip down there and it'll be a business write-off for me to um, <laughs> uh, explore and research the mosquito it's populations research. of Peru. And Rochelle seems a little disappointed. She said she thought Caleb knew everything bug-related. Oh, you know what? I I apologize, Rochelle. I, <laughs> I, I hate to break the... Um, the, the the persona uh, the image that you you had but clearly I don't know everything um, I, I I've fallen short today I apologize um, anyway maybe I do know but I just haven't seen a picture yet of the species so you know we don't know for sure if I don't know um, it just hasn't been confirmed yet so all right last thing don't forget go ahead and let them know about um, August thirtieth. Yes, Josh, thank you. All right, August the 30th, we are going to be doing another drawing, one for the upstate and one for the Columbia area on Facebook. So it is Facebook only. Um, you're going to enter by, tell, tell, tell us how we enter, and this is for one free year of pest control service. Like the post. Okay. Like our page. Mm -hmm. Comment on the post. Include a friend's name and the city they live in. Man, that sounds like a lot, but you can do this, guys. It's for mm -hmm. four hundred and. It's a four hundred dollar giveaway, yeah. basically. Well, three hundred ninety six to be exact. It is a three hundred ninety six dollar giveaway. Full One year. Free, full year pest control service at your home. Um, so all you gotta do, you like our page, yep. you like the um, the post yep. that Josh is gonna yep. make Just for the August uh, it's already nineteen up. giveaway. It's, it's already, already up. up. Yep. And then make a comment on it where you mention a friend. Yep. Right? That's it. And, right? and the city they live in. And the city you live in. Yep. That's right. Because we are going to have to distinguish one winner from the upstate and one winner from Columbia. Because if we don't know what city you live in, we cannot use your comment and use it in the automatic. Okay. Yes. So if you guys have joined us before for the free giveaway, we do use a, a, an auto-generating robot, so to speak, where we put everybody's name, everybody's entry into it. And then it randomly selects one person. We click the button and it sorts through. So we do have to have your city. Um, but yeah, just make a comment with your city and tag a friend in that comment. And you are good to go and we'll get you entered. And good luck to everybody. Um, somebody's got to win. So I apologize for the phone ringing there. That was our service manager who's on vacation calling me. So Oh my goodness. <laughs> all, these, all these managers on vacation. It's just me and Josh holding down the fort here. <laughs> Actually, we still have Beth. And Beth is pretty awesome. We supervisors uh, that are that are taking care of the technicians so we're still in good shape nothing's burned down yet all right well guys I think that's it I apologize I know we went over on time I appreciate the questions it was awesome hopefully we had maybe more than two viewers since we had you know we are up to six right now whoa, whoa. Uh. guys we are breaking records this <laughs> is amazing Hulu Netflix here we come yeah they they better get those checks ready. seriously Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, have a great week, and we'll see you next Wednesday.